as Mr. Palmer here. Uh, next video of the series for tonight, number three, uh, arrays. Basically, looking at one-dimensional arrays. So this is an introduction to data structures. So basically, the big question for this one is what it actually it, what actually is an array? Okay. So before we look at what an array is, can you just actually remember what a variable is and what three things you can do to a variable? So you should remember from your memory now. A variable basically is an identifier which is, it points to a memory location and a value or the data which is stored in that memory location can actually change during runtime. Obviously this is different to a constant which is an identifier that refers to a memory location and the value which is fixed during runtime. Um, that's it. So three things you can do to a variable. You basically declare it, you can initialize it, and then you assign various values to it while the program is running. So um, here we go. What happens if you actually want to store a collection of related data of the same type? For example, TV shows. Okay. Well, you could do some code that's similar to this. You have four or lines one to four. You can see I'm declaring four strings. TV show one, TV show two, TV show three, TV show four. Assigning various values to them. And then uh, line 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Basically, um, uh, outputting uh, the, the values of those variables. Okay, now uh, there are some problems with that. Okay, uh, and I mean, if you think about it, what happens if I got thousands of TV shows? Yeah, I mean, if you think about your uh, TV, um, uh, the channels you have coming across on your television, you know, there, there are loads and loads of TV shows on every day, right? And it would be absolutely impossible to create tens of thousands of variables to store, um, you know, essentially what are groups of the same type of or, or groups of data okay so basically what we can use instead is an array okay so an array is a data structure so instead of having individual variables we're organizing them in a structure so we're storing more than one item of data under the same name so we now have a single name to access multiple items of data all right and all elements of the same data type therefore take the same amount of memory that's obviously not true if it's a string because strings can change in size all right uh, but there you go, three points that basically define what an array is. So this is an example of declaring um, an array. This is in Java. So line one, uh, I'm declaring a sh uh, my an array of TV shows. So the, the identifier of TV shows. Lines two to five, you can see I'm storing various values in different places. For the moment, let's call them places, different positions in uh, my array. Okay. And then line seven, eight, nine, ten, I'm outputting those values by referring to them by their place. All right. So you can see, first of all, I declared my array. All right. Uh, what is the size of the array? Well, we know that it's got four uh, elements in it. Okay. So the word we use are elements. Um, and each element can be accessed by its index. Okay. And its index is, if I go back a bit, the number within the square brackets so tv shows zero the index is zero uh, tv shows one the index is one two three etc so um here's an example of what that uh, array might look like now so basically i've got four elements zero one two three okay each of those is holding an item of data the number that refers to that element is the index just like in the back of the book the index tells you exactly what page the information that you're looking for can be found on the index tells you where the element is all right so that's uh, declaring and initializing that array okay obviously in this case in, in a lot of languages now uh, the index is zero based so we start off at zero not one all right so obviously the zeroth element is going to be the first element the second element is the is has an index of one the third element has an index of two so um, you know you can see that it's always going to be n plus one, okay? The index plus one will give you the position of that element in terms of the way we are thinking about first, second, third, fourth, fifth, right? Assigning values are the same as with a variable, so you can I can just do my uh, element equals and whatever value I want to assign to it. And in Java, and I'm assuming in several other languages, uh, you can find the length of an array. Uh, just by doing the name of the array dot and it will 
gives you the property that defines the length of the array. Okay. Uh, in several languages, arrays are fixed in size. Okay. So once you declare an array, that's it. That's how big the array is. It doesn't shrink and grow. You know. That obviously then has implications in terms of uh, how you how your program will operate. All right. So here's some sample code for. Um, that's not the sample code. Oh, here. Oh, in fact, it is. Okay. Here's a, a, another way of actually initializing the elements in the array. So you can see the red code actually uses a loop. Because if all I'm doing is um, assigning a value to it that perhaps wants that I need to input, I can use whatever input method. So here I'm using a scanner in Java. Okay. So my um, I, I, I have my for loop. Uh, my loop counter is used uh, in place of the index. And so I can input whatever values I want into my array. And clearly, the purple code at the bottom is doing the exact opposite. And it's just using the same technique where the loop counter is substituted for the index and outputting the values that are stored in the array. All right. A slightly better version of the same code, which is in, uh, avoiding using a loop invariant expression, I basically um, declared, and I could have declared this as a constant to be honest. Um, I've declared a variable called end, which is being set to the length of the array, and so basically my loop is um, going round and round, um, but and it's set to stop before it gets to the end of the array. Okay, um, so i has to be smaller than end. Slightly better quality code there. All right. So uh, the big question for this is, what is an array? So you're storing multiple items of data on the single identifier. All items have the same. Uh, data type. All right, uh, and that's it. Introduction to arrays is over.